Continuous delivery is a software development practice in which teams release changes to users safely, quickly and sustainably. It has become a crucial competency for organizations in the modern world that need to adapt to a constantly changing environment. And it has proven benefits, not just for those organizations, but for their processes and their teams. But the reality is that many, many organizations struggle to get better at software delivery. And this is made even more challenging with the onset of microservices, cloud and distributed technologies. Nevertheless, the Accelerate book comes to the rescue. So Accelerate by Nicole Forsgren and others is a guiding light uh, for organizations looking to get better at scaling and delivering software. It outlines four metrics that you can measure to see if your efforts are headed in the right direction. Now, make no mistake, these are no ordinary metrics. The research has shown that they are predictive of organizational performance, i.e. business outcomes. I go so far as to say these metrics should be a common language for the industry to talk about where they are in their journey. In your next job interview, ask the question to the organization. How frequently do you deploy? And importantly, how long does it take on average to restore services when things go down? Now, here at the Continuous Delivery, our mission is to help improve the world's capacity to deliver software with security and speed. So, how could we go about doing this? If software delivery is a differentiator, how do you know where you are relative to the rest of the industry? To achieve this mission, we want to have a better shared view of what the reality of software delivery performance is for developers across the industry. So we teamed up with Slash Data and created a dashboard for the CDF community based on the Slash Data Developer Nation Survey which reached 19,000 respondents from 155 countries between December 20th to February 2021. This dashboard provides insights on deployment frequency, lead time for changes, and time to restore services for 8,000 or more developers. At this stage, we don't have data on change fail rate, but here are some key insights we have from the dashboard. This first chart shows us deployment frequency. On the left, you have folks releasing uh, less frequently than six months. And over to the right on purple, uh, folks who can release on demand and then everything in between. Now, what we found was that only one in 10 developers are elite performers in terms of deployment frequency, i.e they release multiple deploys per day. Then when we look at lead time for changes or you know how long is your cycle time, we have again uh, a range of answers from over on the left, those who are releasing more than six months and over in the purple um, for those re releasing less than every hour. And what this data showed was that for nearly two thirds of developers, it takes at least one week to go from code committed to code successfully running in production. And then we have insights into the stability metric or time to restore services. Half of developers report that they restore service from an unplanned outage in less than a day. Phew. And you can see in the purple, 15% report being able to restore service in less than an hour. I think this means, for example, progressive delivery techniques are just not that widely adopted yet. Now the dashboard allows us to filter by industry and we can ask ourselves, how do industries perform relative to each other? 
we can get an overall picture by plotting the speed metrics, lead time for change and deployment frequency versus the stability metrics, time to restore services. And the idea is to get a baseline from which we can track changes in the industry year on year. So let's take a look at how that shaped up. So x-axis shows speed and the y-axis shows stability. So anybody to the top right is operating at speed with stability. And I think what you can see here is there's a whole bunch of industries that favor stability or speed. Yet you can have them both as the retail industry has shown managed to crack. Then you've got other folks as well um, lagging behind relative to the rest of the industry. But it is important to remember that regardless of uh, any industry on there, each industry does have high and even elite performers. We can also take a look at the software delivery performance by programming languages. Now you might say, why would we want to do this? Well, culture is of huge importance for continuous delivery and developer culture typically centers around programming language ecosystems. So we can get an overall picture of how programming languages rank on software delivery performance by plotting speed metrics, lead time for change and deployment frequency on the x-axis versus stability or time to restore services on the y-axis. And here's how that comes out. First thing you might notice, uh, shell scripting, which includes Bash and PowerShell, shows up as an outlier. Now I have lots of theories for this, but it definitely says a lot about this industry that those using Bash report the best performance on software delivery. I think we've got a lot of work to do. Then looking at the debuggable languages, Go or Golang stands out as well as a platform for folks using it report being able to deliver software with speed and stability. And we've put together a full report um, with all these graphs as well as offering a top 10 ranking for the programming languages. Again, this gives us a baseline from which we can compare year on year how communities and their ecosystems are evolving and getting better or not at software delivery performance relative to each other. Please follow the links to download the report or play with the dashboard directly to gain some self-awareness of where you stand uh, relative to the rest of the industry. But keep in mind, the goal is not to get to the top upper right quadrant. Only you know the context of what makes sense for your team or community. But the goal is to continuously improve. And the idea of the Continuous Delivery Foundation is a community where we can all continuously improve together. And now over to the amazing Christy Wilson to talk more about that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christy Wilson. I lead the Tecton project at Google and I have something to tell you. You're doing continuous delivery. You're doing continuous delivery. And you, and you, everybody's doing continuous delivery. Um, well, actually, that's not true. Oh, really? Well, first of all, most people don't even know what continuous delivery really is. And second of all, I do know my stuff because I am doing continuous delivery. Oh, could you explain a bit more? Yeah, I work at a really cool company. We're WebScale. When I write a commit, within an hour, a blue-green deployment has safely rolled it out straight to production. So I know what I'm talking about, and you are probably not doing continuous delivery. You know, this is reminding me a lot of my early experiences in tech. Hey, everybody. I'm so excited to join the team. Welcome, noob. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask, what's a unit test anyway? Oh my god. Oh my god. How do you not know what a unit test is? Um, I don't know. I just haven't seen one before. 
Did you hear this? Did you hear this? Christy doesn't know what a unit test is. I guess this is your first job, huh? No, I've been working for a few years now. Well, you've been doing it wrong. They're all idiots. That thing is hot garbage. Oh, none of you understand cap theorem. You're all doing it wrong. Is it really surprising that so many people have imposter syndrome? Sometimes it feels like you have to have perfect execution of everything all the time, or someone's going to tell you, you've been doing it wrong. What is up with all this gatekeeping? It doesn't really matter if it's being done on purpose or not, because it's keeping people out. Fortunately, we're starting to realize that keeping people out is not the way to make the best software. What we really want is to be inviting people in and hearing from more perspectives. We need to be inclusive. Hey there, why aren't you going into the conference? Well, because earlier that person said that I wasn't really doing continuous delivery. I mean, my company is so far behind, we deployed a production twice a year after a long code freeze. I shouldn't even bother. Now this is why I think definitions are so important. You don't have to be doing continuous deployment to be doing continuous delivery. If we want to create an inclusive community, we have to have a shared understanding of the terms that we're using. Without a shared understanding, how can we even talk to each other? We are doing continuous delivery. We're doing continuous delivery. Why do so many people have different understandings of these terms? Why do some people think CD stands for continuous delivery and some people think it stands for continuous deployment? Why do some people think that continuous delivery is this thing that's separate that you do once you're done with continuous integration? Why do some people think continuous integration is dead? It's because we're all really excited about these ideas. People want to be doing a better job of delivering software, so they've taken these ideas and run with them. And that's okay, but it can make it really hard when you're new to the space. And that's why with the CDF, I've been working on a place where we can all collaborate on these definitions. And here's what I've found so far. Continuous delivery is an umbrella term for the practice of releasing software safely and sustainably. The goal is to always be ready to release and to automate your release processes. That's the goal, that's the practice. Does that mean that if your code base is sometimes broken, you're not doing continuous delivery? No, it means you've got improvements to make. Think about other practices you might take part in. What do you have to do to be a painter? Well, you have to paint, that's it. If you paint, you're a painter. What about being a runner? What does that take? Well, running, if you run, you're a runner. Does that mean you're doing it? Well, maybe, maybe not. Do you have to be setting records and winning races to be a runner? No. In each of these practices, when you want to improve, there are elements to improve in. There are lenses through which you can look at your practice and decide what you want to improve. And continuous delivery is no different. Here are some of the lenses through which you can look at your continuous delivery journey and evaluate it. Version control is the foundation for everything else. If you're not using version control, this is absolutely where you want to start. On top of version control, we add practices that let us verify changes as we integrate them, like static analysis and testing. And we want these tests to be running regularly, giving us feedback on every change. Once we start looking beyond integrating and verifying changes, we start looking at practices around building and releasing, like configuration management, and automating deployments and releases as much as possible. And of course, interleaved through all of these practices, we need enough security to trust the results. If you're interested in more, in the CDF, the Best Practices Special Interest Group is working on fleshing out recommendations around these best practices and more. Who here isn't in some way contributing to releasing software? We all are. We're all, in some way or another, building software and releasing it. Maybe the process is more manual than you'd like. Maybe you're delivering burnt CDs by carrier pigeon, but you're still doing continuous delivery. Am I doing continuous delivery? Are you making software? Well, yeah, then you're doing continuous delivery. But we haven't even run our unit tests in three months. Okay, so you've got some work to do. Who does it? Instead of comparing your company to some other company and lamenting how far behind you are on your continuous delivery journey, meet yourself where you are. And remember, this whole space is continually evolving. What's cutting edge right now will be old hat five years from now. Git didn't exist until 2005. 
GitHub is only 13 years old. Continuous delivery as a concept came into existence only 11 years ago. Where will we be 11 years from now? Meet yourself where you are. And when you hear all the speakers at CVCon talking about the future of continuous delivery, pick one thing you can improve for the projects that you work on and feel really good about it, even if it's small. Because even if you don't change anything, you are already doing continuous delivery.